happens every year, but not quite as big as this year. Uh, we have just in baseball, four state tournaments, swimming. Uh, I'm not going to list them all, but it is, this is as busy as it gets. And this is a great time for you to focus on retaining who you got before they burn out. I mean, it's all we can do to keep cleaning the rooms if you're in a hotel to reload. And uh, it was really hard when I was uh, short staffed not to burn out the ones that were carrying the load. So it's a great month to feed them pizza, have picnics, free Mountain Dew, go bananas. How about free bananas for the month? It helps with stress and all sorts of things. Uh, you can't always feed them sugar. Uh, you heard uh, Love the One You're With song. Uh, this is Hug the Ones You're With, your existing staff. The All-Stars will help us find new people. My goal is you're going to leave here with hope that there is people out there and now you know how to find them, where to find them, and how to go about it. Is, that, is there any HR folks in here today? Anybody in a hiring role? The uh, Thank you for coming. Uh, you're the smart ones, the ones staying at home. Must be fully staffed and don't need anybody. Uh, to set the stage uh, statistically, uh, we're privileged to have Mark Schultz. He's a real expert at the state level for our region on uh, labor analysis. I, I begged him to uh, not fly too high, but we're going to have Q and A uh, after the the different speakers, and at the end of a, a big wrap up. So if you have some questions, uh, uh, jot them down. Mark's. Uh, Analysis of labor has a specialty in the ex-offender category, and I dabbled in that before I retired, and there's fish in that pond, and we're going to find out where the other ponds are. We are in historical highs and lows of labor that Mark will point out. And in general, the ponds we got to go seek are diverse. Mark? Take it away. Okay. Um, I cannot see the presentation. Um, so I'm just going to go based off on my presentation that I have up on my other screen, if that works. And oh, there we go. We got you. Okay. Uh, next slide, please. So yeah, that's that's me. Um, I, some of you may have heard. Um, I will no longer be the regional analyst uh, as of July fifth. I took a position with the Department of Corrections, so this is actually my last presentation that you you get to see. So uh, it's a it's a bittersweet ending to a, an eight year career. But uh, anyways, that's an aside. So um, next slide, please. So here we're seeing uh, both the labor force and the unemployment numbers from the beginning of 2019 to the most recent estimate we have, which is April of 2022. As you can see with the blue line uh, showing the labor force and the green, orange line showing the number of unemployed, both measures went down during this time period. Uh, the labor force dropped actually by almost 3,200 for a drop of 1.1%. The number of unemployed people actually dropped by over 7,000 or a, a decline of 63.6%. And uh, so that's what's been happening in the last few years. Uh, the next slide, please. And unfortunately, uh, from 2023 to 2033, the labor force projections are showing that the region, the 11 counties in Southeast Minnesota, is slated to see a drop of 2,355 labor force participants, the bulk of that being 55 to 64 year olds. Next slide, please. 
And that leaves us with a job seeker per vacancy ratio of 0.3 to one in Southeast Minnesota. That is the lowest it's ever been. Uh, it is tied for the lowest with Southwest Minnesota and the Metro uh, for the lowest job seeker per vacancy of the six planning regions. And what this means is that uh, currently based on record high vacancies, uh, as well as the decreasing number of unemployed people, it means that for every 10 openings, there's only three unemployed people. And so the labor market has definitely, as you can see in this graph, been getting tighter uh, over the years. Next slide, please. But the region has also been becoming more diverse. Uh, you can see that from 2010 to 2020, uh, the white labor force, uh, or the white population, excuse me, uh, decreased by 4.7%, while all other race groups, as well as Hispanic or Latino origin, increased dramatically, uh, in, including a, a tripling of some other race and a quadrupling of those of two or more races. And so uh, Southeast has become more diverse over time. And as the next slide will show, it looks like it's gonna to continue to get more diverse. So these are estimates or projections from the Minnesota State Demographic Center. So you can see from 2013 to 2053 uh, or any interval in between there, uh, you see that the numbers are increasing again for all race and ethnic categories, except for white, including a tripling of Black or African Americans and a quadrupling of Native Hawaiian and Pacific Islanders, while Asian and two other races more than doubled or are projected to more than double. So uh, the region is definitely projected to get more diverse over time. Next slide, please. So right now, the big worry is where are we going to find people? Well, the good news is, is that there's pockets of the labor force that have a low labor force participation rate uh, and or a high unemployment rate. So for example, 16 to 19 year olds, Black or African Americans, American Indian or Alaskan Natives, uh, individuals with a disability and uh, in some cases less than a high school diploma are characterized by having low labor force participation rates so people aren't looking for work or working you know so for 16 to 19 year olds we see the labor force participation rate is 56 percent with an unemployment rate of 12.8 percent so very low labor force participation and a very high unemployment rate so these are pockets of the labor force that can be recruited from to hopefully increase that labor force participation rate and decrease those unemployment rates. Next slide, please. And also we see that the foreign born population is going to be critical in filling some of these job openings that employers have. And you can see over the last 10 years from 2010 to 2020, the percent of or the number of total foreign born population has increased by 31.4%. And that is going to continue to go up in upcoming years. And finally, let's not forget on the next slide, the previously incarcerated. And some estimates show that these individuals have a 27 to 29% unemployment rate. And a lot of them who have been incarcerated worked while incarcerated for MinCore Industries. So they come out with really valuable skills that can benefit many employers. And next slide. That is all the information I have. You know, if you have any questions that we don't get to during the Q&A session, there is my email. And uh, I thank you for listening. And I think I'm next on the, on the list here, right, Dan? Oh, boy. Jessica O'Brien, our regional labor consultant special this could be your new best friend jessica mark we wish you well in your new passion of uh 
dealing with the uh, incarcerated and and uh, you're going to do great. We'll miss you. And thanks for that. Any quick questions of the statistics uh, on? Yes. We yep. don't. I'm working with the military. I'm working with the military families and I'm working with technology for handicapped and special needs and underserved families and children through the government sector with the building going in in Casson. And um, um, I don't see anything on there for um, single families or um, the statistics okay. or immigrants. We're, we're, we're going to hang, hang in there, Nancy. Let's get to Jessica. She's going to cover a uh, wider variety okay thank and, you because and, you can really read into that and it really isn't telling us what we need to do with with nonprofits and and working with um Im immigration and getting them trained to be able to be ready and get into school and be sustainable thank you okay jessica o'brien and stacy brumfield who's Coming up later, I have the privilege to work with on the equity task force with WDI. And they have uh, the passion and the smarts. Jessica, let's hear some smarts. Hi, thank you, Dan. And uh, really nice to be here, everybody. Um, so my name is Jessica O'Brien and I am the workforce strategy consultant um, in Southeast Minnesota. Uh, for the State Department of Employment and Economic Development, or DEED. And I'm a member of a statewide team of six uh, workforce strategy consultants who work regionally across the state. And we are essentially the workforce development arm of DEED's economic development team. And we provide support to businesses in their talent attraction and retention strategies that help to drive our state economy. And so I'm really excited to be a part of the panel today um, and to share a little bit about DEED's workforce resources and programs. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, we wanna go one back. There we go. So I'd like to um, start off a little bit by talking about our workforce system and our partners. Um, so this wheel on the left represents all of the people and partners that are here um, to help support uh, the success of employers in the state and in the region. And so as you can see, there are many partners that work in different aspects of the workforce system. Um, so such as local planning boards that work together around regional workforce needs, DEED and career force partners. And so this is where um, I am housed as well as my co-presenter, Stacy from Workforce Development, Inc., um, that you'll be hearing from in a little bit. And then we also have education partners, um, such as Mike, my other co-presenter um, from the Southeast Service Cooperative. And then um, there's other education colleagues, adult basic education, K-12 public schools, and some others to name a few. So um, essentially, Career Force is one component on this wheel that you can think Jessica, you're, we lost sound. Jessica, we cannot hear you if you're still trying. Keep trying. All right, can you, I, I'm not seeing that the slide has advanced, but um, we should be looking at, there we go, uh, for employers. So um, one of the resources I wanted to highlight is our D Career Force website at careerforcemn.com. And so when you go to the for employers page, uh, you'll find a lot of tools and information and resources on how to attract and retain talent. And And your audio's broken up. Uh, keep trying. Freezing the. Uh, 
if you haven't used this website yet, you can spend if you get on there and for you can spend easily a half an hour and go. I never knew. I never knew. I never knew. And uh, hopefully we get her back to explain a couple of them. Uh, Jessica, if you can turn your camera off, then at least we'll get your audio more likely to get your audio clearly. Thank you. All right. Is this okay? Are you able to, there we to go. hear me okay? Okay. Um, so um, some of the information um, that you can access uh, in the tabs are um, uh, resources to, that can support HR staff. So uh, guidance on um, guidance for HR on how to set up a workforce plan. There's a tool to help create strong position descriptions, a hiring checklist, um, guidance on writing effective job postings to attract talent. There's also targeted youth resources that are, um, include a toolkit for creating youth jobs and different internships. And then when you click on the virtual and interactive services tab, it will bring you to the sort of top 10 uh, most important tools and frequently used links for employers. And so um, some of those include a virtual career fair calendar that you can, um, as a way to post your hiring events to job seekers that are, use that site, um, the National Labor Exchange Portal, or the minnesotaworks.net um, uh, connections where businesses can post their jobs and job seekers post their resumes. And I do wanna say a quick update on this that we're currently in the works um, to update this tool. And we're really excited to be launching this in the near future um, with the updated version. And so then when you uh, click on the bottom right-hand side, you'll see there's a link for even more resources. And we'll go to the next slide. And so when you click on this tab, you have access to information specifically around resources to help your business. And so you can see there's um, a lot of different links that will take you to um, how to post a job, for example, or maybe there are um, specific pages that would be um, applicable to your business. You can also download resources uh, such as the Career Force Diversity, Equity and Inclusion Guide for employers. And then maybe you're interested in hiring foreign-born workers or seasonal workers, and there's a link for information on that. Um, below this, toward the bottom, there's also a variety of uh, resources and links that our workforce strategy consultant team has created, as well as um, links for information such as um, uh, looking at hidden bias in the workplace. And another resource I want to point out um, is, to, is the Meet Your Regional Team link in the upper section um, that I'll go hide, highlight on this next slide. So this slide has contact information for all of the different um, employees with Indeed Career Force who support you as a business. And so this is essentially the hub of information that you can access by region. And so we have, Deed has a regional team, including myself, and I am there to help you get connected um, to all of the different resources within Deed and outside of Deed um, that you might be looking for. And um, all of the resources, resources and programs. Um, we also have regional data um, and Mark, uh, Mark uh, who will be leaving us, um, his position um, will, be, there'll be another person in that position, but that uh, position is also a resource for you um, if you ever are interested in um, taking a deeper dive in some of the data. Um, and then if you're, um, if you're struggling and potentially need resources on averting a layoff in that kind of situation, uh, we have a layoff assistance person that works on our regional team. We also have um, contact information for uh, DEED's veterans team. We actually have a new staff person that works exclusively in Southeast Minnesota and um, is connected to a network of 600 veterans. And so um, uh, he, his name is Justin Olson. He's a um, great resource and re we're really happy to have him on board. Um, you can also connect with our DEED team who works with job seekers with disabilities as well. And um, they have a newly developed uh, resource, free resource for businesses called Bite Size Learning. And it's a training tool um, businesses can utilize within, um, on your own within um, your company. 
and to learn a little bit about hiring and supporting um, individuals with different disabilities, um, or also we have staff that can come to you um, and uh, implement the training tool as well. And so um, there's also information here, as you can see in the regional news um, that pulls in information specific to the Southeast region that um, also might be of interest to you. And then of course, we do have a career force location in Rochester uh, where you can talk with someone about hosting individual hiring events as well. So we will go to the next slide. And so um, just to kind of close out uh, my part here, and so with the data that Mark shared um, in our current labor market situation, uh, it's really important to look at reducing barriers to employment and building uh, pathways to inclusion in your workplace. And so to this end, we really see the importance of looking closely at all of the talent pools and specifically those who have statistically higher unemployment rates, uh, so, such as some of the populations listed on the slide. And um, it's essentially no longer a world where you can recruit from behind your desk. Um, you have to get out and get into the community and engage with these populations and um, really work to build relationships and trust. And so we really want to encourage you to create a workplace uh, where these populations would feel comfortable and would want to be a part of your employee team. And lastly, I wanted to highlight um, our monthly virtual workforce Wednesday webinars. Uh, you'll see a link here on the right uh, to our career force page that has all of the recordings from our previous sessions and our um, resources for businesses that highlight different recruitment, retention and engagement strategies uh, with some of these populations and um, also successful programs and partnerships that are being implemented right now across the state. And so um, there was, a, I heard a question earlier about engaging immigrants. We did have a really good session on um, different strategies to engage and support immigrant populations. Um, a couple of months back. So I uh, would also encourage uh, folks to listen to those and um, they're always posted on our website there. So, so with that, I just wanna thank you all um, so much and um, appreciate being a part of um, this opportunity to share about the different resources and programs with Indeed. And so I will uh, pass things over to Mike. Mike Schnell is a familiar face. Yeah, Jessica. Jessica, you rocked it. That There is so much information on those websites. You'll get the slide thing if you're trying to keep up with which links and that, but uh, allow yourself time. It's uh, it's it's right there. You just got to go go get it. Uh, we're going to find some ways to go find these pools. We know there's fish in them. How do we get them? I remember in 95, I was shopping at Cub Foods. I was uh, brand new to town and a co-shopper was of Hispanic origin. And I, go, I didn't, I was brand new to Rochester. I go, oh, great. They're, we know, wonderful uh, workers. So I ran a one ad on laser in Spanish. The station didn't know, if, can we do that? I said, I think so. The, uh, and it worked. Uh, there, Jessica has, so it's strategies in her mind and in her title. So if uh, what was mentioned a few times here was a plan. I remember running hotels and staffing was a paragraph of my business plan. It better be three pages now because it ain't easy, right? And a high, high priority. Mike Schnell, come on up. Mike, we uh, a lot of us got to know when he was with the chamber for years in the government advocacy. He helped us uh, stay sharp on top of uh, local state issues affecting our business. And he's uh, rocking it at Southeast Service Co-op. And if you haven't used Mike yet, here's another best friend. Just because I'm in person doesn't mean you have to applaud for me when I come to the come to the podium. Uh, so I, 
as as Dan mentioned, as it talks about up here, I work for Southeast Service Cooperative. So, so the first thing I have to say about Southeast Service Cooperative are those two questions that are on the screen. So who are we and why do we matter for you? So you can think of Southeast Service Cooperative kind of like a chamber of commerce for education and local government. That's what we are. That's who our members are. We're a membership-based organization. Uh, we're actually... Uh, the state of Minnesota says we have to exist, but we do not get state funding. Just like a chamber of commerce, we get money from uh, our members. So that's who we are. So we serve our members. And why does that matter to you? We can offer you something that basically nobody else can offer, which is connections to the schools in ways that you've never gotten before. And that's what Southeast Service Cooperative can do for you. And that's why we matter. So if you want to go to the next slide. So uh, my presentation is going to be relatively short compared to what everybody else has, because this is mostly about letting you know what we have to offer that are for you. So uh, so what do we have that uh, that is going to be important to you? The first one is our Future Forward website. Future Forward is a website. If you go right now, if you have a computer or if you have your phone, you go to www.futureforward.org. Uh, you go to the upper right-hand corner. You will see that we are in the process of completely redoing our Future Forward website. And that is going to be positive to both you and to the schools. The reason we did it is because we kept hearing from people that it's great, it's got a lot of things to offer, but what it is is too complicated. So what we are doing right now is we are uh, simplifying what it has to offer. Uh, we wanna make sure that there is a good connection to all of you and what you have to offer to those students and educators that are looking for you and what, you, uh, what you're doing. The second thing we have to offer is our career navigators. Uh, basically, career navigators are people. <laughs> I forget about the uh, uh, overhead uh, overhead here. So the career navigators are basically folks that are working inside schools uh, that have the ability to work side by side with teachers and students to get you uh, get you in to get you in for uh, you know to speak to a class, to uh, create job experiences, to create job shadows, to create internships, to all those things that are important to you. Right now, you know, I feel kind of sheepish, if I wanna say, talking to a bunch of folks from hospitality, because if folks uh, in general do a great job with working with students that are in high school and younger, uh, you have, hospitality is that industry that does a good job with that. But what I'll tell you is the one thing that you need to remember is that relationships that you create today with these students, why it's important is not just getting them in to let them know what those basic jobs that they can serve in right now are. Create a relationship and let them know what the career path is. Because if they can see how they can survive uh, uh, how they can go further on, uh, how they can continue to progress inside of your company, even if they leave for college or they leave to go somewhere else, when they come back to our region, they're going to go to you first because they have that relationship with you. So create a relationship with them and show them what that career path is. Show them that uh, working in a hotel doesn't just mean working behind the desk, doesn't just mean the fact that you're going to uh, be cleaning rooms, that you can go into human resources, that you can go into uh, general management, that you can go into marketing, that you can go into all these other things. That's the one thing that we want students to understand is that what their view is of a uh, career is very, uh, very straightforward. You know, when they think of medical, all they think is doctors and nurses. And everybody in this room realizes that doctors and nurses aren't the only people that keep the hospitals that we have in our area running. 
there's a lot more that goes on beyond there. So let them know what that full picture is of your group. And we have the ability through both Future Forward and our career nav navigators to get you in to do that. Next slide. Uh, so a couple of other uh, services that we have to offer. Uh, so one of the things that I do, we had Mark, I'm not going to get into it uh, too much, but think about what Mark does from a labor, or labor market analysis perspective. I do the same thing through the Minnesota state statewide longitudinal data system. Just call it SLEDS from now on. That's what uh, uh, everybody else does. Uh, so if you look at SLEDS, I can basically track students through, uh, actually it gets to be through when they're in their early part of their education. So think grade school, middle school, through uh, high school, through college, and then we can actually track to see what they're doing uh, later on, what industries they're in. So one of the things that we're creating uh, now in SLEDS, it's something because of conversations that I've had with folks like you, uh, I asked for is we're going to be able to follow if a high school has a specific program that is training in hospitality, manufacturing, whatever it is that they're training in, if we can actually watch to see if from that high school, I'm not gonna be able to tell you the students are because there's a privacy component to that. We're, we're gonna be able to watch to see if putting that emphasis on that industry leads to, as we move further on, having more students going to school uh, for that. And if it leads to more students actually going into that industry and staying in that industry. So we're going to be able to do that. That's not a uh, tomorrow snap your fingers and be able to see that, but that's something that we're going to be able to track as we go further on. So there's a lot of great uh, data out there. The last thing that we have at Southeast Service Cooperative, one of the reasons that most people probably know us is if you think of Woodlake Meeting Center, it's a great place that uh, if you have, if you don't have the ability to host conferences in your facility, it's a great place that you can go and host a bunch of conferences. Uh, have We have a lot of rooms. We have a lot of technology. We have a lot of different things that people are able to do. Uh, so even if you do have the ability to uh, host people in your facility to do those things, if there are some folks, if uh, there are larger conferences, or other things like that, make sure to think of Woodlake Meeting Center as you're uh, uh, moving further on. So uh, that, I think, if we go to the next slide, I think that's all of me. Yep. Thank you. The chamber uh, led up a uh, learn to earn under when Mike was at where we had a connection to the Rochester schools. And uh, you add a 15, 16 year old to your lineup, it, it's uh, it's invigorating. Uh, it's a little different, uh, but uh, you, know, you welcome them and uh, try and make them part of the gang as, upon arrival. But you know, they're, they're a little different. They, uh, they, the cell phones attached to their, to their hand well. Um, WDI, you know, if, uh, if, if you don't know that's Workforce Development Inc., we should quit using WDI, but, uh, we will today. Uh, Stacy's, uh, heading up our diversity equity, uh, team af after, uh, being launched by the director for the first year. So we're in, we're in great hands and that'll kind of be our grand finale, uh, Come on up, Stacy. Thank you for being part of this. If you ever wondered what the heck WDI does that could help me, listen up. Okay. I will grab this. Oh, no, I will not grab it. All right. <laughs> Hi, my name is Stacy Brumfield. Uh, as Dan said, I work with Workforce Development, Inc. I am their diversity, equity, and inclusion coordinator, as well as their trades program coordinator. So it's primarily like construction trades that I work in right now. 
Um, I want to talk to you today a little bit about what Workforce Development Inc. is, and then uh, give you some resources that specifically can help employers that you may be interested to run with after this presentation. Um, and then we'll end specifically with an opportunity in that diversity, equity, and inclusion space that all of you should really take advantage of today. Um, so I'll have you go ahead to the next slide. All right, so first and foremost, like I said, I just wanted to give a little overview of what we do at Workforce Development Inc. Um, this is our website and uh, we have a lot of resources on here, just like Jessica pointed out. So I encourage you all to peruse. Um, essentially, we help career seekers as well as employers. So we have a group of career planners over 50 throughout the region. So we serve the 10 county region here in southeastern Minnesota. Um, and in Rochester, we have about 15 career planners. So uh, those individuals work directly with the job seekers coming in. We can help what we call universal customers. So anybody, whether they're eligible based on our programs or not, anybody off the street can come in and get assistance writing their resumes, getting interviewing skills, those sorts of things. Um, we also have some core programming, though, that people can qualify for and receive financial assistance to maybe go back to school. So our career planners work with them to identify what they're excited about and then match that with an in-demand career. So we've got career paths that we, uh, myself and my counterpart, the Career Pathway uh, Coordinator, we, we form and try to help people reach their goals. So uh, me working in the trade space, we put on some courses, we connect with industry leaders to ensure that we're uh, empowering people with the information and the education to be employed in those spaces. Um, we, like I said, we offer services to the employers as well. Um, and that's where I will get on to the next slide. Great. So uh, first and foremost, we have all kinds of opportunities to get your information out there. So advertise your positions, um, specifically our job boards. So we create job boards for each of our 10 counties that we serve. And those are shared on our website as well as distributed to a distribution list. So anybody off the street, once again, who's interested in looking for a job can come and sign up for that. And then they receive it on a weekly basis. So it's your opportunity as an employer to showcase the jobs that you're hiring for, give a little bit, a bit of information. Um, then we also, our career planners can take that information and directly feed it to the interested candidates. So our career planners have anywhere from usually 50 to 100 people on their caseload with 50 career planners that's tapping into a lot of people in the region. Um, specifically for employers, we connect with them on work experience and on the job training opportunities. So we call them WEX and OJTs. Um, those are opportunities where oftentimes we can pay the salary for an interested candidate to come in and learn the job and get some experience with you. Um, and then at the end of an allotted amount of time, you and that candidate have a conversation and decide if it's a good fit, if you want to continue with them and hire them on directly, um, or if it was just a, a bridge for them to learn a space and then maybe move on to something else. Um, and then lastly, I wanted to mention IBM Skills Build as a tool to employers. Um, so in the Southeast Minnesota region, Workforce Development is the partner with IBM to distribute this totally free technology training tool to any in, uh, interested participant. So there's no eligibility criteria. All of you in this room today could sign up for IBM Skills Build if you have any interest to train in the IT space. Um, so it, they have pathways that lead to badges that are... Uh, uh, accredited through Credily, and then you can share them on your resume, on LinkedIn, um, and they lead to things like cybersecurity, coding jobs, all, all sorts of opportunities there. And like I said, totally free and anybody can utilize that tool. Have you go to the next slide. All right, so this is what I wanted to get to as the big exciting opportunity for all of you employers out there. We've talked a lot about this untapped talent pool today. Um, and this is one way to get into that. So this is the Inclusive Workforce Employer Designation Program, or called IWE to make it simpler. Uh, so uh, the IWE program is a, a program that was first developed in Northwestern Minnesota, and it's now being utilized down here in Southeastern Minnesota, as well as Central Minnesota. Uh, what we're really excited about is, uh, so it's been, it's been a des designation process since last summer, and now in our second cohort, as we're starting to roll that out, we've got a rubric tool that all three of those regions have come together to create in partnership with the University of Minnesota Extension. So we're really excited to roll that out in this new cohort. Um, it's gonna, going to add a lot of validity and make it a really impactful designation process. 
uh, the point in this process is to essentially go through four primary components. And they, as you hear them, you'll understand how they can really expand to much more detail. Uh, but we're looking for employers to express a commitment to an inclusive workplace in their stated values and missions. Um, and then we're looking for them to also do some sort of an assessment to assess how diversity, equity, and inclusion influence their work and culture. Um, we also want them to provide diversity, equity, and inclusion training to all levels of staff. So specifically, we want leadership to be involved in this. We want them to have, have a, a key into this as well. We want every level to have that education component. Um, and lastly, we're looking for them to, to show us how they plan to allocate resources going forward to continue these efforts in their business. So it's not meant to be a one and done. We really want some impactful effort happening in these businesses and something that can be sustained. Um, those four components can happen in any order. And I point that out because this process is meant to welcome employers at any stage in their DEI journeys. So some employers come into the into this process and maybe they already have taken some sort of a organizational assessment, um, or maybe they have already done some educational components, or they might be starting from scratch and have no idea where to go with this work. Um, we want any kind of employer to come in and join these cohorts, and then you'll be working with other employers and you'll be learning from one another. That's the cohort model that we think really helps this process. Um, along with working from, or excuse me, learning from other employers, we also have a, a, this employment and equity task force that's backing you. So what Dan's mentioned a couple of times, uh, Dan, Jessica, and myself all serve on this employment and equity task force. Um, there's several area organizations that are involved in this, to name a few, um, Workforce Development Inc., the DEED, Diversity Council, Rochester Area Chamber of Commerce, Hospitality First, Southern Minnesota Initiative Foundation and Riverland Community College are all represented on that task force. And we're always welcoming new members to, again, get at this super impactful, long lasting designation. Um, one thing that's that I like to mention as well are, is the, the businesses that have already gone through this process. So part of this process is not only do we want it to create long lasting change in, in your organizations, um, but we then can highlight you in the end of this. So we then want candidates and career seekers to know that you've gone through these processes and that you're committed to creating an inclusive workplace. Um, so in our first cohort, which kicked off in the summer 2021, we had seven employers that participated, Zumber Valley Health Center, McNeilish Truck and Manufacturing, Riverland Community College, Albert Lee Seed House, Hearth and Home, and Hiawatha Valley Mental Health Center and Southeast Service Cooperative. Um, we have two of those businesses that have been designated so far. So they've gone through and filled out an application to us, essentially walking through those four components, showing us how they've met each component. They present to our task force. And then we decide, you know, is this, is this, has this business met these qualifications? What questions do we have for them? Um, so McNeilish Truck and Manufacturing and Zumber Valley Health Center have both been awarded that designation so far, and we're hoping those other people, businesses in the cohort will follow suit. Um, we are recruiting right now for our second cohort, and we've got 11 businesses so far. We're looking for maybe about 20. Um, we've got, got the capacity for it, and we'd love to have a lot of feedback at the table. So there's educational opportunities offered throughout this uh, designation process and a lot of cohort learning. So we want as many businesses with diversity in industry, size, and demographics to be at the table to lend their expertise. Um, so my plea to all of you today is go on our website, which I showed in that first slide, uh, and find our programs, the IOE tab, and you can go ahead and fill out a really simple, it takes five minutes or less, interest form. Uh, and then I'll have your information and I'll send you the kickoff event for our next cohort. Oh, and this is uh, all of our contact information for the speakers today. I will just announce that. <laughs> Great. All right. Thank you. I've been busting my butt on this task force. I'd be very proud if a hospitality company stepped up and got the gold star for equity, the gold star, the IWE designation. <clears throat> You were the first group a year ago to even know it existed. And one year later, it's it's got traction. You know, a year from now, there are gonna be more and more. And all those people that live in those different pools will recognize the this new gold IOE star. And they're, <clears throat> they're gonna find you. But right now, you gotta go after them. Out of all the presenters here, the uh, 
uh, that strategy part of, uh, you know, putting it on paper, you're in good hands. Uh, it's in Jessica's title, but I'm sure Stacy or, <clears throat> or Mike would, would lend you a hand too. But if you don't have one, and I'm guilty, I said it earlier, you need one. Uh, and it just isn't getting done the old way. And there's new ways and all these resources at your fingertips. You, you got to get on them. Go use them. Be the first kids on the block before the rest of them find out. The whole chamber will have access to this uh, deck and and every, every industry's uh, hurt and soul. Beat them to the punch and get hopping on it. We, we have a couple minutes if, if there's any uh, discussion on, on what was covered and if there's some gaps in, in something you were hoping for that wasn't covered, I think you know who to call. Uh, Sarah. Okay, so I'm just curious. Um, I keep hearing and reading about major layoffs coming, right? I'm curious how that's going to impact the already challenging um, labor force that we have. Is it going to be a positive impact, negative impact? What is your team doing with that? Or is it just all hearsay? I don't know. Layoffs, uh, what are you hearing about layoffs? <laughs> well, um, I will say specifically, like if you look on LinkedIn, there's a lot of talk right now about there's, we're going into a recession, there's going to be major layoffs coming our way. Um, and I think a lot of them, yes, at entry level, mainly, mainly positions. So I don't know, is that something though, that we're going, Hey, not a bad thing because it's going to positively impact where we need people. Um, I don't know what's, oh. am I the only one that's been hearing there's major layoffs coming? I, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Mark? Okay, so uh, this is Mike Chanel from Southeast Service Cooperative again. So the one thing that uh, I would say, because we work with youth, because we work with uh, high school students, the one thing you always want to think about when you're working with youth and you're talking about these things is having them look forward, having them look at what the potential opportunities are, because even even if uh, in this situation there's layoffs coming along, and I hadn't, I hadn't actually heard that, but even if uh, there are layoffs coming along, that leads to opportunities when you're, uh, when you're talking to these potential workers. Because if you look at, if, if, if we think back to what I talked about in my, uh, in my conversation, one of the things that we always talk about is uh, what do students know when they're going forward and thinking about what they're going to do for their career uh, is they know what their parents do. They know what their parents, friends do, and that's pretty much it. So it is our responsibility to give them that view on what else is out there. And that also means, like I said, when you're bringing a uh, when you're bringing a worker in, don't just talk to them about what they're going to do today. Talk to them about what they're going to do today and talk to them about what they can do as they move forward in their career with you. Because if they know what they can do, if they are moving forward in their career with you, that means that, like I said, even if they go on and do something else, when they come back, they have a relationship with you and they're a lot more likely to come ahead and, you know, do if they're moving into HR, they're a lot more likely to go into HR with your company than they are to go look for someone else. So it is important to talk positively and to look at the future, no matter who you're looking at, but specifically when you're looking at working with these younger employees, because, you know, we already talked about workforce participation rates. 
we don't want that workforce participation rate to get down even further. Yeah. Uh, we want it to. We want to make sure that we're boosting that up. And one way to do that is to, quite frankly, not scare the hell out of them. Yeah. Um, Mark, or, I Mike, believe had an answer for him too. Okay. Hello. Hi. I don't know about Sarah. If if there's late layoffs coming but what's cool is if we develop a relationship with a workforce center they have that dislocated worker programs and they can take that workforce that was trained in manufacturing or whatever and then funnel them backwards to those to those employers that are that are hurting whether that's hospitality or whatever so building these relationships with the presenters that are here today um is just smart at, at, at any level um and bruce had something I want to ask a question. Is this on? Yes, it is. Uh, do you take a person who's going to work in the church, ordained clergy, teaching Sunday school, or playing the organ, uh, and whatnot? Um, I can't go to the high school. Marines can, Army can, clergy, uh uh. Um, there's a separation of church and state. Do you cross that line, and are you willing to work with persons who work in the church? And Stacy, uh, we have a board of ordained ministry as United Methodists in the conference. Would that kind of, of relationship qualify for uh, diversion and inclusion kind of thing? I served Oakland Church. That's in South Minneapolis, and it's in most integrated community I ever lived in. They closed it and moved over to uh, farther east. Um, how, do, how do we stay in that school, the field school? We had a speaker for United Way here, uh, and she went to field school but didn't graduate. She went to Regina High School, and I thought, uh-oh, oh, I made the wrong assumption. Uh, there's a place there for uh, someone to work with clergy or with the church or the Board of Ordained Ministry oh. for the two of you. Thanks for pointing that out, Bruce. Uh, we're going to move on in the uh, agenda. Yep. Stay I can offer um, as an answer to, to your question, um, as far as like the diversity, equity, inclusion, as the IWE is concerned, anybody that's an employer can be involved in the IWE designation process. So Southeastern Minnesota and be an employer is basically the criteria. Uh, so if that's, if that's the case, I would really encourage you to go to our website and fill out that interest form. Um, and then if. So in, in that situation, I, Quite frankly, I'd need to know a little bit more specifics because, quite frankly, in our conversations with the schools for what they're looking for, uh, I would guess that in a lot of cases that you'd have the ability to come in and speak. You would not necessarily have the ability to come in and speak uh, about specifically what your religious beliefs are, but you'd have the ability to come and speak and serve the uh, schools on what they have to offer. So they, they wouldn't just because of what you uh, just because you're working for a church doesn't mean in general that they're not going to let you in the door. Okay. 15 years ago, I did a flyer for a job, uh, a career fair and came up with 212 titles used in hospitality. So several people have made the point. It's not just bartenders, waitresses, and housekeepers and front desk clerks. We need IT. We need engineers. We need salespeople. We need social media. Uh, so the uh, painting a picture that there's opportunities 200 past to go is, is kind of cool. Uh, if you get a career seeker, I got one more tip for you. Uh, we're, we're losing people to a better job. I never let a good one go all the way. I'd beg them, bug them about four hours a month, cover a staff meeting, uh, keep the uh, Hilton hotel perk going for yourself. And uh, so we had several mail and it doesn't hurt to have a nurse on duty at the desk clerk on Sunday night. Uh, oh boy. The, uh, so don't, don't let them go. Hang on to them for pinch hitters. They want to help. They just got a better gig, but their hearts in hospitality. Keep it there. Thank you. Andy.
Thank you, Dan. Really appreciate it. Next up on our agenda, we have Clavon Holter, who's president and key business partner with Heartland Tours and Rochester City Lines, uh, one of Rochester's oldest businesses, been around for over 63 years. But she's going to tell some about their uh, amazing tour journey, bus journey. And so come on up, Clavon, and share with us. You can use this one's on here. Yes. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for uh, the invitation to be a speaker today. I am Clavon Holter. My husband, Dan, and I are second generation owners of Rochester City Lines and Richfield Bus Company, which actually I put in the wrong order, Richfield Bus Company and Rochester City Lines. Uh, we have touched thousands of lives through our industry of transportation. Dan's family began in the industry moving people uh, 60 years ago. His father, George, began Richfield Bus Company in 1959, and Rochester City Lines began in 1966 when the Chamber of Commerce of Rochester called up George and Richfield and asked him to start city transportation here. Our son Christian is now the COO of both companies, and Dan and I started Heartland Tours and Travel in 1990. And Dan Nelson, when he mentioned about young blood, and of course, we're talking about workforce today, we are dry, um, hiring drivers and mechanics. And yes, we need, we need employees as well. Uh, next slide. We offer pre-planned tours for public or customized motor coach tours for you or your group. The length of tours we offer range in, from one day to two weeks. We also offer international travel through our industry partners. Now, 2020 was poised to be our best year ever, but like many of you, our motor coach industry and hospitality, entertainment, restaurant, and retail industries suffered great loss because businesses were closed and could not operate normally. For us, we are in the business of moving large groups of people in an enclosed space, think bus, uh, to large events. And with social distancing and fear of spreading or contracting disease, we were not able to congregate in 2020. We were down 95% of our typical business. Due to the pandemic, Heartland Tours offerings right now are limited, but we are having success bringing private groups together. For example, we have a partnership with a financial institution who has a travel group. They have a destination. We make their trips viable by opening them up to our Heartland Tours customers, and it is a win-win all the way around. If you would have, if you have or would like to start a travel club, we would love to be in collaboration to provide your transportation. With our fleet, we can move groups, both large and small. In the past, we helped a manufacturing firm run a workforce shuttle to meet their deadlines. That initially was scheduled for 90 days and it was so successful that it lasted 12 months. When Mayo had EMR software training, we moved 50,000 people in 50 days without error. We provided more than 20 buses for the Ryder Cup when it was in the Twin Cities and also um, when it was in Green Bay, I believe we were over there. And today we can transport your corporate guests or maybe you wanna do an employee appreciation and take uh, your employees to the Twins or the Vikings game or a destination of your choice. And again, it's been mentioned today about relationships. That's what we're doing. We're building relationships uh, with our customers. You can, uh, next slide. Many people today are returning to life as normal and wish to take vacations and be in community with people. Some doctors are actually prescribing vacations. There are many benefits to travel, whether this is to new places or a regular getaway to some place that you always enjoy, your favorite spot. Both mental and physical health are positively impacted when travel is experienced. According to WebMD, traveling can release stress, provide calm, increase creativity and focus, and may allevi alleviate symptoms of anxiety and depression, boosting your mental health. There are lasting effects of travel and travel even can produce a fresh dose of productivity when you return to work or your routine. Many people travel for work constantly, but travel for pleasure has greater benefits. Some of the Heartland tour destinations in the past have been to Branson, 
um, Nashville, Washington, D.C., and the ever popular Albuquerque Hot Air Balloon uh, Festival. And these are all larger, exciting, longer trips, but I want to expect, um, tell you how uh, recently our financial partner took a two-day trip to Watertown, South Dakota. Doesn't that sound exciting? But they found there's a Terry Redland Museum there. There was a, a Goss uh, Opera House. And you know, there's just always little hidden treasures in some of these small areas. So for a two-day trip on the coach overnight and back home, they had a great time. Next slide. So I said that our partnership with travel groups is a win-win. Active Peer is another reason that people love to travel with Heartland Tours and Travel. Because the safety and security of our passengers is top, top priority, Active Peer technology was implemented to sanitize the interior of our fleet of vans and motor coaches, as well as our office locations. In fact, one of our guys who had been laid off, he came in to work one day and he said, wow, you know, I always used to see dust floaties by this bright window. And he says, they're gone. Well, this is what our Active Peer technology does because long before COVID, Active Peer was stopping mold, bacteria, common colds, and flu from spreading. One of the top seven inventions from the space station, Active Peer Air and Surface Pro is patented technology proven in biosafety labs to reduce live SARS CoV 2 to greater than 99.9% .9 in the air in just one minute, and it disinfects surfaces without chemicals. Shared air is purified in real time, just like it happens in nature. Eliminate common triggers of allergies, asthma, and irritants for those with a sensitive immune system. Active Peer creates oxidizing molecules like the sun does outdoors. In fact, there's 5 million cleansers on the size of this dye, outdoors cleansers. There's only, you know, we don't have that. We have tight building syndrome. So, um, in unaffiliated third-party lab testings, Active Peer has been proven to reduce up to 99.99% of pathogens, including the SARS-CoV-2, but also bird flu, E. coli, MRSA, norovirus, staph bacteria, candida, swine flu, hepatitis, legionellas, mold, odors, VOCs, and more. And that's a long list, and it has been proven against all of these. Active Peer does not replace the need to follow public health guidelines, and should be used as a complementary technology. This technology is already being used in industries like hospitality, churches, and government. It's in the uh, Ground Zero Museum and the Liberty Bell Museum, but everywhere it eliminates the hazard. Next slide, please. Active Peer is serious science, a class two medical device currently in a double blind study in operating rooms at the number two clinic in the nation. It is validated, verified, and vetted. So as you watch this video, imagine this space to be your space. This is how pathogens such as SARS-CoV-2, the virus responsible for COVID-19, spreads throughout a waiting room from patient to patient if untreated. Slow and ineffective technologies like HEPA filters or UV lights only treat the air that goes through the filter or the virus and bacterium directly exposed. Active Pure technology takes a proactive approach by continuously filling the room with powerful molecules, including gaseous hydrogen peroxide, that quickly attack harmful pathogens as soon as they enter the space. Active Pure is effective against a broad spectrum of airborne and surface pathogens. I just like to share that to show that this is how we are caring for our passengers, our tour guests. Um, and if you would like to discuss how you can partner, oh, you can do the next, the last slide there. If you'd like to discuss how you can partner with us um, for Heartland Tours and Travel, or if you'd like to know more about Active Peer Technologies, my contact information is on the screen. Our, our Heartland Tours and Travel is just heartlandtoursandtravel.com for our website with tour information. Thank you. Really appreciate those updates on technology and the great tourism business that you helped to support in Rochester. Uh, next up, we're changing the agenda just a bit. Uh, Sarah Clausen, one of the 
senior sales managers at Experience Rochester is going to give us some very quick updates on Experience Rochester. Thank you. Hello, I am Sarah Claussen, as Andy mentioned. Um, I am not Nick Landry. Um, unfortunately, Nick has actually decided to um, take a job closer to home. So as many of you probably know, Nick is um, lives in St. Charles, Missouri, has a young family, a lot going on. Um, he spent two and a half years here during a pandemic, really organizing the entire sales efforts and um, many other things on the operations side as well for Experience Rochester. So we can't thank him enough. He was a wonderful leader for us and we will miss him dearly, but completely understand as well. Um, so in the meantime, I am going to be interim VP of sales. So if you do have anything, you can direct them my way. Um, I did want to just cover a couple of things really briefly. I know we're over time, so I'll be really quick. I won't bore you with going through all the, the specifics, but I do want to tell you what we've been doing at Experience Rochester. Um, we did hold a meeting with our hotel stakeholders last week to also share this information. So far, year to date, so six months in, we actually have turned 29 pieces of business definite for our Mayo Civic Center and our surrounding hotel rooms, um, which is huge. Um, I'm very excited about our efforts. Along with that, we actually have 12 contracts out right now that we are anticipating will come back to us within the next month or two. Um, so 12 additional pieces of business, which just in the first half of the year, that's, that's big. So coming out of the pandemic, great things are happening. I know we're not quite out of it, I guess, but we're on the other side, hopefully, right? Um, I also just want to touch on our revenue um, as well. So looking at the Smith Travel Report, which is up here, you'll see that in May, the market actually recovered to 98.5% of pre-COVID levels, which is very good news um, in both rooms sold and total revenue. So year to date, the total market revenue has recovered to 93.3% of pre-COVID levels. So we are definitely climbing back in the right way. Um, so that's great stuff. Thank you. <laughs> so we do have a lot of stuff on the books. I will tell you that, yeah, you want to get those labor forces ramped up because we have a lot coming to Rochester in 2023 and especially 2024 is going to be very busy as well. So get ready. Thank you. We will be uh, publishing these uh, reports, uh, but it's great to see us taking the climb uh, as you see uh, both on a three month basis and a 12 month uh, basis. And you can see the, the bar graph really shows it best when you can see year to date that uh, our rev par is growing 35% uh, versus the running 12 months where it's also close to that 35% range. So we're definitely going into the period of recovery and special thanks to our experience Rochester team. Go Rochester. Uh, in helping to uh, uh, make that happen. Also on the supply side of things, as you'll see on the on the uh, worksheet comparing us, it should be noted uh, for the uh, month of May that Rochester had the uh, greatest growth in supply of 3.8% in hotel rooms, uh, but it also had the third highest demand growth with over 32% uh, percent, uh, growth. And for the year, I believe we're at about 9% growth in supply. And there will be some changes as you have probably heard. Uh, the Doubletree Hotel is being converted, I believe next summer into University of Minnesota housing. So that will take, it's all right. All right, so October 1st this year, they're closing down the guest rooms and that's part of that $8 million renovation so that it can become student housing for 400 students 
uh, for the University of Minnesota, which as I understand, I believe is like a 12 year uh, contract. So uh, a lot of change there, but uh, on a brighter note, there is one more hotel coming in February of next year. And that uh, is from the North Rock Hospitality Group. And that would be a new 96 suite residence in by uh, Marriott. So that is coming down the pike. Uh, uh, most likely February of 2023 uh, for that. Remember to check your agenda uh, for the list of upcoming events, which is really full. And as people were talking about earlier, Jurassic Quest at Mail Civic Center is July 8th through the 10th. So it is coming up just around the corner. And don't forget to attend Rochester Fest uh, this week in its full level of excitement and events. Remember, we're next meeting on Thursday, August 25th from 945 until 11. And it will be in-person only as we are uh, changing to that model for in-person only. And look forward to some uh, updates, including DMC and other points of reference as we round out the summer. In the months opposite that, as we just saw last week, Experience Rochester is doing some really partner discussions to thoughtfully look at groups and other initiatives. So we thank them for helping to inaugurate that. Special thanks to all of our speakers today for all your thoughtful energy and not only tourism and transportation, but on the labor supply. There's some great resources that have been presented. Please take advantage of those and use those because even though some areas of industry may be reducing staff, Hospitality is growing, as is the medical market. So help them. Let's grow together. Have an amazing start to your summer. It's here. Thank you.